the right, going back to Nick, Richard Nixon's enemies list, has long looked at the media as, as needing to discredit the media in order to preserve political power. Welcome back. Drone Tech here. First off, just wanted to thank Myers Woodworking for donating this amazing piece of artwork behind me. They make several different variations of the flag, which I highly recommend you go over and check out as soon as you're done with this video. Let them know that Drone Tech sent you and get 10% off your purchase. You can find the links in the description or the pinned comment. Thank you. Were you under the impression that we have a free press in America? Did you think that the press was an objective arbiter of the truth, tasked with holding the government to account? Perhaps it was once all of these things, but now it only exists as a tool of the far left and the Democrat party, and they use it to advance their political agenda and force this country to bend to their will. Over and over again, we see the press using their power to destroy political opposition through constant demonization, dehumanization, and even doxing. While these are common tactics used by so-called journalists in the media to attack and discredit their critics, they unsurprisingly hold their critics to a completely different set of standards. We saw this hypocrisy in action just a few days ago when news of a bed bug outbreak in the New York Times newsroom started to spread. A George Washington University professor named David Carp took the opportunity to zing a New York Times columnist named Brett Stevens calling him a bed bug. Pretty tame stuff, especially when you consider that this very columnist is on record comparing Republicans to dictators and once said that Ted Cruz would sell his family into slavery if he could. While we all know left-wingers love to dish it out, they really can't take it. So this New York Times columnist gets butthurt and emails both the professor and the university complaining that he called him a bed bug. Apparently, he's trying to get this professor fired from his job for the high crime of making fun of a columnist. Not only did this hack contact the professor's employer and try to get him fired, but he went on MSNBC to whine and seriously suggest that, quote, Analogizing people to insects is always wrong. Being analogized to insects goes back to a lot of totalitarian regimes in the past. And yesterday, um, a professor at George Washington University described me as a bed bug or a metaphorical bed bug, uh, just in the context of the New York Times having a, a bed bug problem in our building. And I think that kind of rhetoric is, is dehumanizing and totally unacceptable no matter where, where it comes from. Um, is that the worst thing that you have ever been called on social media? There's a, there's a bad history of being called, uh, of being analogized to insects that goes back to a lot of totalitarian regimes in the past. It would appear that Stevens has taken a page from the Democrat Party media playbook and has cast himself as the victim of a completely imagined totalitarian takeover of the country. Before I move on from this pathetic excuse for a bed bug, let's take a look at some of the things he said in the past. In 2017, he actually compared Rex Tillerson to Mao Zedong and Pol Pot, which he had to apologize for. And then again in 2018, he compared Trump to both Pol Pot and Hugo Chavez, and then later to the Maduro regime. He even once described Ted Cruz as a serpent covered in Vaseline, whatever the hell that means. And I want to read what you wrote about the Republican candidate there, Ted Cruz, because it, 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 it made my year. Um, this is you writing in today's New York Times about Ted Cruz. He's like a serpent covered in Vaseline because he treats the American <laughs> people like two-bit suckers in 10-gallon hats because he sucks up to the guy who insulted his wife by retweet, no less. Because <laughs> I'm just wondering, did I miss something? <laughs> And I think that kind of rhetoric is, is dehumanizing and totally unacceptable no matter where, where it comes from. He even once called critics of Colin Kaepernick quasi-fascists. As I've documented for years and repeated over and over, the media holds their critics and their political opposition to standards that they themselves are never held to. We saw another example of this yesterday when the New York Times posted a story whining that they had to let go one of their journalists because somebody had exposed old racist tweets of theirs. The tweets were released by a group of Trump supporters who want to expose and ruin Democrat Party activists who are posing as journalists. Predictably, the left-wing media has a real problem with their own standards being used against them and will no doubt rationalize why it's completely different when they do it. This is a coordinated effort by President Trump's allies who are not seeking to hold newspapers to account, but who are seeking to intimidate and embarrass journalists and that's what's so different about what this effort really is damn 
I must be psychic. As we all know well by now, the Democrat party media has used these very tactics against their critics for years. I've lost count of all the right-leaning figures who have been destroyed because the media dug up old tweets from 10 or 15 years ago. Despite this fact, media hacks everywhere are framing this as a diabolical plot to attack democracy. It's an intimidation campaign. We're going after families. And it's in some ways not entirely new in that the right, going back to Nick Richard Nixon, enemies list to Jesse Helms going after Dan Rather and CBS. Here again, we see them accusing their opposition of what they themselves are actively doing. They constantly frame criticism of the media as an intimidation tactic, and this guy actually says that they're going after families. Wrong. If you've ever watched Gordon Ramsay's show like Kitchen Nightmares or Hotel Hell, you've seen this exact kind of diluted deflection many times from bad chefs and hotel owners. It's never that they suck at what they do, it's always that Gordon Ramsay is so mean in his criticism. On a side note, I love that he brings up Dan Rather, as if he didn't present forged documents just before an election in an attempt to sway that election. He's really turning us all of us collectively into the enemy here not vladimir putin he's not the enemy the media is so this is going to lead to you know we've talked about this before to i think some real dangerous turn of events there it is again it's dangerous to criticize the media it's dangerous to criticize democrats but it's perfectly fine for the media to attack and demonize the republican party on a daily basis trump didn't make the media the enemy they did that all themselves and they did it long before trump ever showed up the hypocrisy is maddening, but it's somewhat comforting to know that there are some left-wing journalists out there at least trying to be consistent. Senior media writer for Politico, Jack Schaefer, made it quite clear that he believes old journalist posts are fair game, pointing out that the media had absolutely no problems with these tactics when they were being used against their political opposition, saying, quote, Of all the thin-skinned beasts prowling the journalistic forest, few have thinner epidermis than the boys and girls who work at the New York Times. As much as I would like to sympathize with my my fellow journalists, it doesn't strike me as unreasonable to ask them to own or repudiate vile things that they might have stated in the past. Nor is it remotely unfair for the president's supporters to demand that journalists who are forever denouncing him as a racist to be held accountable for their bigoted speech on Twitter or anywhere else. Journalists don't deserve a get out of bigotry jail free card just because they're journalists. This is yet another brazen attempt by the media to inoculate both themselves and the Democrat party from criticism by simply framing criticism as a fascist intimidation tactic, all while they themselves are completely free from these totally made up constraints. It's not just a sign of corruption, but also a sign of how deeply ingrained the indoctrination is. These people really believe what they're saying, and that's a scary thought. These manufactured delusions that these people live in are exactly what they're going to use to crack down on all dissent and opposition in the future. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar. You may also send me a donation over PayPal and I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thank you and I'll see you all next time.